everyone. My name is Laurent. I'm here with you to talk about uh, how to secure your uh, host private cloud uh, administration platform. As you surely know, when you want to go to, to the cloud, OVH Cloud has several ranges according to your needs. We choose for this demo the hosted private cloud range. This range is the combination of virtualization, isolation, and security. Host private cloud has all the best certification in the market in order to provide a high level of security. ASO 27001, PCI DSS, HDS for the health data, GDPR, SOC 1 and 2, and, is, and it's currently under certifying process for Secure Cloud certification. During this demonstration, we are going to see what are the main security features that will allow you to secure your architecture. As you can see, uh, we have a regular range with embed few security features, and we also have a range especially made for the PCI DSS and HDS certification. Those host private cloud embed few extra security options like the 2FA authentication, the operation validation by SMS, and the mandatory whitelist access to the admin interface. For this demonstration, we chose to focus on the policy, man the policy management, how to create a user, what are the security features that could be implemented just in the manager, the 2FI authentication, what is it, how can we implement it, and also the NSX appliance, the NSX edge and the NSX distributed firewall, what are their purposes and how can we set them up. When you start with your host private cloud, you get uh, a NIC handle admin. That means that you are in charge of the admin platform administration. Like we all know, with great power comes great responsibilities. Indeed, one of them is to set some policy management. We are going to see together how to do so. First, connect to your, to the OVH cloud manager. When you start with your host private cloud, you get a NIC handle admin. That means that you are in charge of the admin platform administration. Like we all know, with great power come great responsibilities. Indeed, one of them is to set some policy management. We are going to see together how to do so. First, connect to the OVH Cloud Manager. Choose Server right there. In the left column, select, select Private Cloud. Select the host private cloud you want, and voila, your admin interface. As you see, for this demonstration, we have a host private cloud PCI DSS certified. As you see, for this demonstration, we have a host private cloud PCI DSS certified. Let's create a user. Here, select the user tab. Here, select the user tab. Create a user name and email. Click next. Let's only give the read only write. This user will only have access to vSphere with read writes. We confirm. Once this user is created as admin, we are going to have to validate this demand. PC DSS request. But we come back on that letter. There. Our user is created. Let's see what we can do. Uh, in the right menu, click on Edit. Few personal information, first name, name, email, phone number. Here, there, the token validator. It gives the right to validate operation. IP, IP whitelisting filtering. Whitelist filtering. Uh, it is mandatory on uh, when you have a PCI DSS uh, host private cloud. The failover IP to get a failover IP. The NSX interface allows the user to use the NSX interface. So let's activate the NSX interface. Once again, someone with token validator enabled will have to validate the operation. So once this is done, we will see in the summary tab, the NSX field will show yes. Once this is done, we will see in the summary tab, the NSX field will show yes. 
you have to refresh. Now, in the right menu, in still the, in the same right menu, select C, change the right for each DC, modify rights. This is the right that the user is going to have on the data center, uh, on this data center. The Vesper access is the global user rights on the Vesper platform. If we set it on read rights, it gives the user the right right. Here, this is the management right over the public network section. Set it on provider. Uh, it allows the user to configure VM on a public network. There, the access to the VLANs. Management right over the private network station section. Management right over the private network section. Set it on administrator. It allows the user to create and manage power group on the virtual switch. We check the add resources box. It allows the user to add resources through the OVH cloud plugin in the Vesper client. When this is, once this is done, we confirm. After that, go to the security tab. Let's focus on the right block. Modify session expiry period. You have two choice. Either the session never expiry, either you can set up the lens. Modify the number of concurrent connection. You can set up the number of connection. The default one is 50. Modify the center access policy. Open or restricted. Add a new IP range. This is about the whitelist policy. Add a new IP range. A whitelist policy is set. So here you can add a new IP or IP range to connect. That's all for the user management. Below, virtual machine encryption key management server space. This is where you can add a new KMS server in order to cipher your VM hard drive. A key management server refers to the management of cryptographic keys. The KMS create, exchange, store, use, and replace crypto cryptographic keys. In this case, it provides the necessary resources to cipher the virtual machine hard drive. Now that we saw how to create a user, let's see how to set up the 2FA authentication. First of all, let me remind you quickly what is the 2FA authentication. It is a strong authentication method by which a user is granted access to an IT resource. An authentication is based on the fact that a user, in order to prove, to prove his identity, can present three kinds of proof. The first kind is something he knows, password or pin code. The second kind is something he has, token, OTP. The third kind is something he is, digital print. The 2FA authentication process is a combination of two factors out of three. Let's see how we can implement this. For that, connect to the URL of your hosted private cloud by adding just had uh, at the end of the URL uh, the, the, the word secure, like this. Choose change password. Select password and 2FA shared secret. Select the user you want to give the rights. Select a new password. You can use your favorite OTP manager to scan the QR code. Myself, I use free OTP. Write the pin code that the application gives you. And there. Your operation is now set. When you do that kind of operation, an admin is notified on his smartphone. On the text, there is a nice and kind message. But most important, there is an operation ID and a token ID. Write your operation ID there. Load the operation. Write the token. And confirm, confirm the operation. The operation is validated, but also logged. On the vSphere platform, it is possible to create the architecture as big as you need to. But the security requirement stays the same. So let's see how implement a good filtering solution. A quick presentation of NSX solution. The software defined networking. This is a software defined networking, part of VMware solutions. 
it can expose logical firewall, routers, and other networking elements. On our demonstration, we'll see the NSXH gateway in the first place. This element is the core router of our network. It will be in charge of the north-south flow, the flow coming from internet to the architecture. On this edge, it will be possible to add mm -hmm. firewall rules. Secondly, we'll see the distributed firewall, which are in charge of filtering the east-west traffic, traffic between VMs. The NSX platform is only manageable through the Vesphere web client. So connect to your interface like this, select Vsphere web client. We are asked to use the two-factor authentication. I use my OTP manager. So select the little house in the taskbar, network and security. Select your NSX age. To add uh, an NSX age, you just click the little green cross. First, name and description. In the first place, you have to select what kind of installation you want to realize. You have the choice between Edge Services Gateway, which can lead to DHCP, firewall, VPN, NAT services, routers, and uh, load balancing, or either logical router, uh, which led to uh, just a, a distributed router. So for the demonstration, we, we are going to select Edge Service Gateway, give a name. After that, this option will allow to deploy the NSX Edge. Uh, there, this is the high availability. We are clicking next. Now, this is the parameter, the username, admin, the password that we have to type two times. We uh, decide to activate the SSH access and the uh, rule automatic generation. You can choose the data center where the edge will be deployed. Size of the appliance compact for demonstration or for training uh, is okay. For a larger uh, brand width, you can select other type of uh, size. Here, we have to select the cluster where the edge is going to be deployed. There, the storage. There, it's in how to configure the interface. This part is for creating network interfaces with, which are mandatory to the edge operation. Button, button had in order to create your interface. Button had in order to create your interface. The first one could be public and the second one could be private. Name of the interface. For public uh, network card, let's select a link. Choose the appropriate network. VM network for the public network. And the connectivity goes to connected. Let's do the same operation for the private network interface. Check intern. Select some VM. The interface is now connected. There, you can configure it the default gateway. You choose public or private card. The IP of your gateway. And there, this is the firewall here where you configure firewall rules and high availability. You check the box configure firewall. Default traffic policy. Either you accept or you uh, refuse the connection by default. And here you uh, want to be, uh, you want the action to be logged or not. H, H, uh, high availability parameter only available if you already, uh, if we already checked the high availability in the first menu. We didn't. So now that the north south traffic is able to circulate, let's see how to set up a distributed firewall. Distributed firewall run in the kernel. The distributed firewall is a stateful firewall which monitors the state of active connection and use this information to determine which network packets to allow through the firewall. For the layer 3, select uh, general. 
For the layer 2, you can select Ethernet. By default, all the traffic of layer 2 and 3 is authorized on the network. On the right side, let's click on the green plus. It adds some default rules that you can tweak as you want. After, after this, you can add all the route you need by clicking on the left green cross. You can modify the source and the destination by clicking on the little pen, and you can choose to a different type of object. IP, group of IP, virtual machine, etc., etc. Once the rules are set, save changes and click on Publish. Click on Publish, it will apply the rules. Here, guys, the demonstration is now over. Thank you all. Uh, let's meet around a Q&A session.